Like so many things adventure riding, last night didn't go as planned. Paul and I headed into Lockhart Basin. We had what we thought was plenty of time to make it through and one thing led to another and we rode probably 40% of the basin in the dark, which brought me to the point, I have a great lesson for you today and it's about setting up your lights for off-road riding. It's something that I don't see a lot of riders do for their bikes because we set the bike, the accessory lights that we have on the motorcycles for riding on the street or riding through gravel roads. In which case, we expect the bikes to be fairly level. Unfortunately, Lockhart Basin is a real challenge with some significant ups and downs and rocks and cliffs and drop-offs, which means I had to set the lights up for off-road riding. I have some accessory lights on the bike. I run the rigid uh, D2s. And what you end up doing is putting one high and one low. Basically, you split the difference between your high beam. So you put your light out, your high beam. Uh, there we go. Had a little concentrate there. Uh, uh, caught a luggage on the, on the rock. Okay. So, all right, where was I? Oh, put your high beam out, and then you just one to shoot below the high beam, and then you shoot one above. Now, what's really messed up is the shadows get in your head. You start worrying about everything instead of just riding it. Okay. The biggest issue with riding off-road is the fact that the motorcycle goes up and down and I can't see. So the way to adjust your lights, which we had to stop and do, because we had both of us he had the 1200 GS, I was on the 790. We had our bikes, bikes set up for the street, which meant that the headlights were aimed at the same place the accessory lights were. Off-road, we had to stop. I had the high beam and low beam set just like you do on the street. But what I did was I took the secondary lights and I aimed one very low to the ground. So it's aiming, so once I put the, the high beam out and the, the low beam out, this low light has to aim significantly below that. Not quite at the axle, but definitely very low at the ground. And that's usually the biggest issue is when the bike comes up, we end up in the darkness. So every time it comes up, I wanna make sure that this lower light is still aiming at the ground. The other light, as you might've guessed, I aim just above the high beam. And that allows it to come up and, and when the bike compresses, I'm still looking down trail. It is important to note, you will probably have more issues with the bike coming up in the air and losing the trail than the compression. So the, the high beam or the one you're gonna set above the high beam should just barely hit above the high beam and the lower light should hit smack dab between the low beam and all of that information or all of the, the ground right below that front tire. Turned out they saved us. We made it through safe. It was one heck of an adventure. If you ever try to decide to go do some night riding, make sure you, you plan to do some movement, adjust your lights, figure out where you need them. Don't be afraid to pull out your toolkit, make the changes you need when you need them, uh, which will take us to another episode some other time when we talk about toolkits. There you go, my tip for, uh, for this time. If you like the information I have, these short, quick tips, make sure you subscribe, leave your comments down below. I love seeing comments and I love making videos based on what you want to watch. Thanks for watching. It makes me really nervous coming down those that hill. You can't see what's on, over the dark. Don't know if it's a ramp or a ledge. So I was ready for both. It was a ledge, I was just gonna hop off and figure out what to do with Paul. But luckily, it was not. Let's check on Paul. I'm gonna sleep well tonight. One of the things I like to tell people is, don't go out too late in the day. Don't go unprepared. Make sure you have enough water. Have a backup plan. How bad did I fuck this up? You need to go high, high left. You need to go off the end. You don't go down there. Cross that way? Yep. Have to go diagonal. And then drop down into the sand below it. So drop down and then right or just straight out? 
Yes, straight out if you can. If you're clear there, but you can't drop down there, you won't fit. And you gotta have some momentum, you're in a bad spot. This is a whole lot better if you rode into it. Well, I was trying to do that, but I kept bouncing off of the rocks. No, I understand, I get it. Yep, go, go high, because even if the front end slips, you want to slip down into the sand. Because even if you slip down there, you can recover. And if you don't, we're stuck there in the sand. You don't want to get stuck here. So go high on the rock, and then let the bike turn down. So. Or here. Yep, it's in our heads. This is the joy of night riding. As I mentioned at the beginning of this little adventure, the um, we were kind of starting a little late. Although I had a pretty good idea how long it would take me, I did not properly guess Paul's abilities. After eight hours on the road to get here, and then now seven hours on the trail, Paul's pretty, pretty bad shape, uh, energy-wise. All right, into the sand, keep things moving. Yeah, those sharp edges sure are spooky at night, but you just have to remember, they're just rocks. Not that big a deal. Basically, they're really big granules of sand. Yeah, also run a lot slower than me. So I'm on a ledge, pointed in the wrong direction. We're in a. We're in a very, very technical rock section. So I just ended up walking all through the woods, <sighs> trying to find the trail. <sighs> Get this thing turned around Whew. and go up where we were supposed to go. Okay, so one again, turn off the brakes. There we go. Nice and easy with the clutch and the throttle. Oh, man, when fatigue is set in, everybody is susceptible to simple mis mistakes. So I'm trying to avoid. I had an apple I used for hydration and some energy. I gave half to Paul because he was also out. And there's the problem. Again, off. There we go, all right. 